I love music. I mean, who doesn't? That is why I started my uh, music channel on YouTube, if you want to go check that out. I also have music on Patreon that you won't find on my uh, music channel on YouTube. I can't sing, but I'm using uh, AI tools to create music, and I think it's pretty good, so if you want to check it out. Anyway, this week we continue with part two of pop bands with gay band members. Yes, I think pop part two. Um, let's get into the video. Pop bands, who have a gay member? Alcazar is a dance pop group formed back in 1998 and is considered as one of Sweden's most successful music acts, both nationally and internationally. To be honest, I only know one of their songs, Crying at the Discotheque, which was a song to bring them international recognition back in the year 2000. When disco like a the song was certified gold in Belgium, Germany and Switzerland. And in September 2020, British singer Sophie Ellis Baxter released the cover version of the song. The group was riding the waves of success for several years, headlining several music festivals and releasing two studio albums before announcing on their website in 2005 that the group would be taking a break. In May 2007, the band reunited for a one-time performance in London at the nightclub Gay or G-A-Y. The response from the fans was overwhelming and a few weeks later, the band officially reunited and released their comeback single We Keep Rocking in 2008. Shortly after releasing their third studio album, the group disbanded once more, seemingly for good this time. Almost a decade later, the group reunited once again for Euro Pride in 2018 and delighted fans with news that they were working on a fourth studio album. And although fans had to wait a while, their fourth album finally dropped in 2024. Andreas Lundstedt and former Alcazar member Magnus Carlsen are both gay and even dated each other. I kept it to myself, but knew that finally one day I would surrender. Although Carlsen had been performing since 1994, his big break came when he joined Alcazar in 2002 but he left the group in 2005 to concentrate on his solo career, releasing 8 studio albums after leaving Alcazar. Lundstedt, on the other hand, had somewhat stepped back from the limelight and although he's recorded several singles, he's never recorded a solo studio album. Besides appearing in the musicals Grease and Chicago, it seems he has left the entertainment world behind. We all know who the Pet Shop Boys are, but if for some reason you don't, here's a brief history lesson. They were formed back in 1981 by vocalist Neil Tennant and Chris Lowe on keyboards, and their music dominated the airways in the 80s and early 90s. Billboard has ranked Pet Shop Boys as the fourth most successful music act in the US, behind Madonna, Michael Jackson and Donna Summer. The most unusual song from an unusual band is the Pet Shop Boys and West End Girls. Their debut album, Please, was written and recorded between 1984 and 1985 and was released in 1986, reaching the top 10 of various charts, including Billboard in the US where it reached number 7. The album was a critical and financial success and spawned four singles, including the hugely popular West End Girls. They released 14 studio albums over the years, all of them masterpieces just like the ones before it. But for me, several songs always stood out more than others. It's a sin. The single It's a Sin from their second album was released in 1987 and although at the time Tennant said that he wrote the lyrics as a way of purging his emotions of his time in a Catholic school, the melodic mixture of frustration and anger has taken on new meaning in the years that followed. Neil Tennant, who neither denied nor confirmed gay rumors during the 1980s, came out in the 1994 interview with Attitude magazine and even though most of their songs aren't specifically written as gay songs, they have resonated with the gay community for an array of reasons. When I was um, you know, a teenager in my 20s, I was bisexual in that I had sex with both men and women. After a while I decided I preferred having sex with men. I wouldn't rule out having sex with a woman again. An old man turned 98, he won a lottery, and then died the next day. 
You've probably seen videos of the skivvies, or if you're lucky enough, you've seen them perform live and strip down as they call it. What makes them stand out from other groups is the fact that they perform in their underwear on stage and it's not just the audience who appreciate their performances. In 2014, People magazine named the skivvies as the most playful performers and the Wall Street Journal praised their distinctive music style and highly original concept. Nick Searley is openly gay and one of the founders of the Skivvies. Out magazine selected Searley on its Out 100 list of 2014 as one of the most intriguing and compelling LGBTQ actors of the year. And although he's best known as one half of the Skivvies, he's acted in several off-Broadway shows including The Rocky Horror Show and Little Shop of Horrors. People weren't used to seeing uh, men as women on a more regular basis and now I feel like it's a lot more mainstream and so it's a little more normal to see that. The success of the group took both members by surprise, with many of their loyal fans being from the gay community, and their gay fan base has grown over the years. During 2024, more than a decade since the band formed, Celia was interviewed about what the future holds. We've been getting more offers to play shows with our clothes on lately, he stated. So jokingly we always reply, I don't know how to play the song in our clothes. I think that they still have the same spark they had a decade ago, but the request to see them perform in clothing probably an acknowledgement of their talents and that I don't need a gimmick to keep loyal fans happy. Jimmy Somerville is a British singer who fronted the 80s new wave pop groups Bronsky Beat and the Communards and has also had a solo career. While with Bronsky Beat, their biggest hit was Small Town Boy, released in 1983. The lyrics tell of a young gay man who is bullied and decides to leave home, with many music critics praising the song for embracing and highlighting the love that you need but will never find at home. I didn't even know Yahoo still existed, but during an interview with Yahoo Entertainment in 2019, Somerville stated, I think it's a very common experience for people, and I think it even goes beyond the gay issue. People who just are rejected and thrown out like that. Somerville released six studio albums between 1989 and 2015. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to give me a thumbs up and a subscription will help. I'm trying to reach 30,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If you want to see the first video in this series, you can check out um, that video by clicking on this link or you can check out other similar videos about pop bands, no, not pop bands, boy bands with gay band members by clicking on this link over here. Um, also, you can check out my two smaller channels or um, check out on check me out on Patreon. Not check out. That sounds like a pickup line. Support me on Patreon. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.